energy. We are so talented. Yes. We all have talent like this, but sometimes we don't tap into it. So I'm very proud of him to tap it into what he has on the inside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you go ahead and tell everybody what you do. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That was chocolate, y'all. Oh, okay, I ain't gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These, these two right here is chocolate. Talk louder, talk louder. Okay, um, these two right here are chocolate, and the background is acrylic, and um, these two is acrylic as well. I use acrylic and uh, chocolate syrup. And uh, my name is Christopher Ryan. My art name is Dante Dahl. And I've been doing art since I was about 16, 17 years old, and it's been going on from there. Um, I think one thing that inspired me to start doing this is um, learning about my history, and I use that to express my art. And I realized like a lot of people don't don't like to pick up a book and read. So what better way to put that through art, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, throughout the years, I've been like learning about my history. I've been reading since I was like, 20, and I've, I've been picking it up. And I like to teach young kids and stuff too. So um, the name of this painting is called Liberate. It's uh, Andrew Davis painting I did. Can you lift it up for us, Bob? Yeah. Right on the back. And it's got a chocolate, chocolate syrup. And what I do is a lot of people, you know, um, they don't like to buy it because they think it's going to cause bugs or, you know, it's going to be like that. But um, what I do is I use a coating spray, and what it does is it seals it so it doesn't, it doesn't melt or it doesn't cause nothing. And I started this, I've been doing this for about eight months. You know, um, this, right now this one's sold. I'm just using it to show it off because I feel this is very powerful. And I feel... Um, we as people need to liberate our minds before we can open up. That's right. And I feel right. Like that's really big. Um, this is a Malcolm X painting I did. And this is done in chocolate too. And the background's done in acrylic. And I figure I give it some swirls to give it an illusion. You know, make you really look in it. And it says, um, Without an education, you won't go anywhere in this world. And not only that, if you read it backwards, they'll say the same thing. Like, um, go anywhere in this world without an education, you won't. You know, so it's vice versa. And I've done, I did this um, three months ago. It took me about um, a month to do. And I put a lot of hard work into it. And, you know, just learning about, um, like, Malcolm X, like I like to do, I like to learn about them before I do them. Mm -hmm. It makes me, I don't know the word. It, yeah, it makes me tap into it. It makes me understand it a lot more. It makes me express it. So I like to express mm -hmm. it to others. So they don't know. I ordered page um, and um, I guess the plants on the rice. The name of this painting is called Pain, and. Um, Basically, I, I'm, um, I'm taking classes at South Mountain Community College. I'm taking one right now, and I'm taking African, African American history, and Odyssey. And I'm just learning about all the, through the slave trade and the plantations that we've been through around the world. And you know, it's kind of just, um, it's kind of painful to, to hear that, you know? And you know, I like to express that through my work. Um, not only that, um, I use finger. I use my fingers because I wanted to express how powerful this is, this message is. And the woman, you know, a lot of people saying she's real, you know, and, and I feel it too. You know, people see the scars, people see the pain and bruises, and a lot of people want to know why there's holes in it. But really, I burnt it because it's symbolizing that she went to hell. Yeah. You know, and I want people to know that because a lot of a lot of our young youth don't know our history mm -hmm. or the past. And it's it's very powerful and we should know that because if you don't know, you're not it's kinda like you don't realize what you're doing in this world now. You don't know your history. And if you do know you wouldn't be doing it. 
You know, you see she's crying as well. Mm -hmm. You can feel that pain. If only you knew it. This is a painting I did, it's called Rebel. And it's basically like the Black Panther movement. And you know, it's Huey, Huey Newton. Um, I was going to put Bobby Seale in there too, because he was part of that as well. Um, a lot of people want to know what his RAM means, and it means the Revolutionary Action Movement. And it's where they. Um, we started the free breakfast clubs. They were feeding mm -hmm. like, homeless kids and kids that were that were in need. Mm -hmm. And not only was it about like power to the people. And when you say power to the people, a lot of people are thinking it's just about black people. But really, it's about like all people. It's the community. And I think a lot of people think um, the Black Panther Party were just racial radicals. But really, they were about the people. They were fighting against the oppressors. You know, so it had nothing to do with black, um, black people, just black people. And I put these words in here because that was very powerful to know too. You know, oppressed, like I feel they were very oppressed and they were seeking justice. They had so much pain and they wanted freedom, but the main thing they wanted was equality. And that's what they were fighting for. You know, I have this shield here because it, to me it symbolizes protection. Not only that, I've seen um, the Huey Newton picture, I thought it was really cool. <clears throat> um, you know, the shotguns, protection too, during that time in Oakland. Um, they were fighting for their rights and they used the law to battle against that. And the, um, the Black Panthers I used because, you know, symbolized the Black Panthers. And the flags is ripped up because I, it was representing that they were. Um, they weren't accepting what the system had um, gave them. You know, they were fighting, they didn't believe it was right, so they was fighting for what they believed. And you know, there's a mist in the background, and I wanted to put this fist in so it can give it a little illusion as well. And a lot of, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a phoenix in here. And the phoenix is, a, um, is a rebirth, you know, it came, it died, okay. it came back to life, which I feel needs to do it again. And, you know, that's about it. <laughs> Alright, uh, my name is uh, Open Thoughts, but my real name is Charles Young. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I work at a school district, it's a Phoenix Elementary School District, it's sixth grade. Um, uh, actually, what we're working on right now is this organization where we try to uh, elevate, escalate, and aware blacks all around the world to uh, a new set of consciousness and uh, our black history. Because we've been starting to figure out, like you said, nobody's picking up a book anymore. It's kind of sad, so we decided that we wanted to take it within ourselves to use uh, artwork music and poetry to express that because that's really what the kids like. You say a book and they're like, I don't want that. But put on two chains and they know the whole song. <laughs> so we do, we really we really want to express it. So so even me, I do my artwork, I, I have all my stuff outside. But um like we really trying to we really trying to bring this movement up to to everybody, you know. We really trying to we really trying to, not just one set of group but everybody because uh, we feel that white people need to learn our history too to accept us, but if they don't, they still need to learn it anyway, you know, at least it, it may do something, you know, so. Um, I wrote this poem out, it's called uh, Just Mental Qualifications, so there goes. Um, from the top of my head to the bottom of my toes, I want you to know I ain't perfect and never will be. You see, society has created the words perfect image and turned it into a mental religion. Not like Christian, but more like prison. Confined in the mind state that if I don't dress in a certain way or talk like this or that, then I must be the wrong person. But what we fail to realize is that half the world speaks with an accent, slang, or improper. Speaking of improper, how can a person tell me that I'm not qualified for greatness all because I don't have a certification? Well, 80% of the wealthiest men in this world only got rich after being college dropouts. What we need to realize is that God doesn't work in perfect people. He creates oceans out of mud holes. But since I guess I don't fit your visual criteria, then I must be inferior. Why? Because my hair looks weird? Or because I don't shave my beard? Because I'm 
I'm not bilingual or white because I ain't Asian, mulatto, or light, six feet in height or short. Despite all the little intricate details that you decide to judge someone on, in actuality, you're the one missing out on the lesson because that one imperfect soul that you decided to pass up on could be the same person that's holding your blessing. And what, and what a lot of y'all don't know is that half these words in this book, I can't express them. But that, uh, but that don't mean you can't learn something from me. But I guess since I got a record from three to five years ago, or I guess because I like to wear nice clothes and jewelry and stuff, or I guess because I don't have an associate's, bachelor's, or master's, or doctor's degree, I can't speak with eloquence. You see, we're wrapped up like presents, because even though we're out of our adolescence, we still decide to act ignorant to the fact that judge is just another way to say stereotype, and stereotype is just another way to say separation. Separation is just a nicer way to say prejudice, and prejudice is a hidden way to say racist. And as we all know it, racist is just the best way to say judge. So when you point your finger at me, what you really doing? Because I was sorry, when you point your finger at me, three fingers are pointing right back at you. And as I'm sitting on the stage, I'm still being judged. But what you don't know outside of this body is that I've done two books, 40 episodes, one commercial, one album, one script, then I've been poetry for the kids, all with a book, but busted down, caprice, and they have a budget of 825. So the message that I'm trying to express is don't, don't judge a book by its company. The pages might have too much to say. Just to